joy and immense pleasure the venture endorsement of the Equal Supplementary Act A stroke S, A stroke 1, stroke 12, stroke 16. Senators hail powers of ECOWAS Parliament. Malian President highlights security with Nigerian defense students. Plus, Electoral Reform Committee takes more views. A warm welcome to NTA Network News. I am Elizabeth Banu, and we're joining you. We're reaching you live from Abuja. Nigeria's capital city. Acting President Yemi Oshimbaju has solicited the cooperation of the international community on the country's fight against corruption. The acting president made the appeal while declaring open a national dialogue on corruption. State House correspondent Jide Unifadi reports. The cooperation of the international community, as explained by the acting president, is of great importance to the success of the anti-corruption war, especially in hastening the return of looted funds and assets to the country. We find that the process of returning assets, aside from the judicial process, is so difficult and so complicated that it could just take you literally years to get assets returned. And I think that is important for countries of the world where uh, stolen assets are located to really work with us in ensuring that these assets are returned uh, speedily. It should be made clear that corrupt practices will not only be punished wherever they are found, but that stolen assets will be returned speedily. This, this sort of thing should really be, should really be fast tracked. Acting President Jeremy Oshimbaju observed that no nation is immune to corrupt practices, stressing that Nigerians must be determined not to allow corruption to thrive in the country. The acting president urged participants to fashion out a model that can assist in solving the problem once and for all. The National Dialogue on Corruption is organized by the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption. Corruption is omnipresent in Nigeria. What is extremely disturbing is the fact that the people's attitude to corruption has hardened. There is no longer any fear of consequences. It is the unparalleled determination of this administration to succeed in the fight against corruption, including the determination to retrieve from abroad and at home the huge mind-boggling monies which were stolen from our country's commonwealth. And we have to commend that. That the Nigerian judiciary remains very much committed and in complete support of the efforts at uh, curbing corruption in Nigeria. That the Ministry of Justice and indeed all the administration of justice institutions will stand ready to diligently implement all the outcome of this dialogue as may be decided by government. The two-day program will involve participants drawn from all sectors, including the civil society, dialoguing on such theme as meaning and conceptions of corruption including types, effects, and obstacles to effective fight against corruption. Nigerian's social economic order, the reward system, the political party system, pattern of legal and judicial system, and elite manipulation of religion and ethnicity. From the banquet hall of the State House, today on Ifade, NT News. In the meantime, Inspector General of Police Ibrahim Idris says the administration's fight against corruption must be supported by all Nigerians. He stated this while interacting with members of the entertainment industry under the aegis of Voice of Change Nigeria. Timothy Yusuf reports. No matter what they say, they can never pull you down. The visit of members of the entertainment industry to the IGP was essentially to seek protection in a rally to be organized by them across the 36 states of the Federation in support of the Buhari administration's fight against corruption, which they described as a fight to finish. The visiting members cut across Performing Musician Association of Nigeria, PIMAN, Actors Guild of Nigeria, National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS, Civil Society Groups and Association of Local Government of Nigeria, ALGON. The only way forward for Nigeria is to end corruption of corruption. The Inspector General of Police reiterated his commitment to fighting corruption. He assured members of the Voice of Change Nigeria that all the commissioners of police in charge of state commands 
will be directed to provide adequate security for the group during their rallies. In your elevated position to pass messages across that Nigeria is the only country we have and we cannot have the comfort to play with the destinies of this country. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NTA News. The Senate has commended the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, for strengthening the powers of community parliament in line with international best practices. National Assembly correspondent Waziru Zayanu reports that this followed a motion moved by Deputy Senate President Ike Ikoremadu. In the motion, Senator Ike Ikoremadu said, enhancement of the powers of the parliament, which is a major advancement towards democratization of governance of the sub-regional body, also helps in promoting checks and balance. He called for the amendment of the Electoral Act of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to empower the Independent National Electoral Commission to conduct elections to fill the nation's 35 seats at the ECOWAS Parliament. The fourth legislature of the community parliament had continued with relentless effort towards realizing the enhancement of the powers of the parliament. We receive with joy and immense pleasure the eventual endorsement of the ECOWAS Supplementary Act a stroke S, A stroke 1, stroke 12, stroke 16, related to the enhancement of the powers of the Coast Parliament by the 50th ordinary session. In another motion, Senator Gashem Basi appealed to the federal government to properly resettle the Bakasi people through a participatory and properly negotiated resettlement program. The failure to resettle and compensate the people of Bakasi has made them refugees in their homeland with no form of livelihood and hope for posterity. Two bills have been passed by the Senate after sailing through third reading. They include the Advanced Free Fraud and Other Related Offenses Act Amendment Bill 2017, as well as the Petroleum Training Institute Act Amendment Bill 2017. From the National Assembly, Wazir Zayan, NTA News. The House of Representatives has passed for second reading a bill for an act to establish the National Council for Public Assistance to the Elderly, Widows and Orphans. The bill, sponsored by six members, seeks to enshrine social security in Nigeria's constitution. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunko reports. In liberal democracies, the welfare of the vulnerable in the society is an integral part of the functions of government. As important as this is, the state of the well-being of this group is always a major criteria for measuring national development. It is in line with this that six members of the House of Representatives seek the establishment of a government body that will ensure the well-being of this group. Categorically, to provide public assistance and aid to widows. What this Social Security and Welfare Bill does, Mr. Speaker, is to provide a, a safety net for the, for the citizenry. This bill centers on the functions of the local government. We'll go ahead and do it, then it now becomes the responsibility of the judiciary to say that the law contravenes the constitution. Members also beamed their searchlight on the operations of automated teller machines in banks. The House, in a motion moved by Representative Joseph Ejonwole from Edo State, resolved to investigate alleged sharp practices in the services of ATM. Eliminating the incidence of debits without dispensation of cash. It is the bank that uses every avenue to exploit the customer. Financial requirements from students at the law school featured at the house as members described law school fees as exorbitant. The house mandates its relevant committees to interface with the Nigerian law school and other stakeholders to address the matter as moved by Representative Mark Bila from Benue State. For an institution that is funded annually by the federal government, find out that they don't have more than five, seven lecturers. So where are they? What is this money meant for? A new member was sworn in. He is Representative Jerome Amadieke of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. He represents Eche Omuma, federal constituents of River State. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. The need for greater vigilance and coordination of sting operations by the security forces in Africa has been highlighted to surmount the new threats of insurgency and terrorism in the region. This is the suggestion of President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita of Mali while hosting the Commandant National Defense College, Rear Admiral Samuel Alade and the participants of NDC Course 25 on a study tour to Mali. 
Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma reports from Bamako. Applauding the recent success of the Nigerian military against Boko Haram, President Ibrahim Bovaka Keita noted that the new tactics of asymmetric warfare by terrorists is very challenging, hence the need to collaborate on intelligence gathering. He gave example of a recent collaboration between Nigerian and Malian intelligence services, which unmasked a notorious terrorist network in the region. President Keita called for daily consultation among the different security apparatus in the West African sub-region, as this will go a long way in addressing insecurity. Because I know that doing this will, will uh, uh, be able to reinforce our intelligence services in uh, coordinating, in adapting, and in utilizing our intelligence forces and our intelligence services. He also advocated the regional special forces to tackle terrorism, drug trafficking, and trafficking in persons as they are transnational crimes. The Commandant National Defense College, Rear Admiral Samuel Alade, is optimistic that the study tour will assist the participants in analyzing security and sociocultural challenges of the region and formulating strategies in addressing them. My government back home, in Falamezon, is also taking steps. Okay, to address the challenges of economic recession, economic, specifically, specifically, efforts are being made to ensure the core the that Nigeria takes its proper place, the Nigeria Latin ideal, in contributing, contribute to international peace and security. The NDC contingent to Mali also visited the International Institute for Peace, where they were briefed on the activities and programs of the center in the protection of civilians in conflict areas and its intention to expand its scope to de-radicalization and reintegration of ex-militants. From Bamako, Mali, Isaac Unkuma, NTA News. And strict adherence to the rules of engagement by the Nigerian army is a doctrine that protects human rights during ex internal and external operations. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tukur Burete said this when he discussed with the delegation from the National Human Rights Commission. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has details. Insurgency, an inevitable counterinsurgency that began in 2009, in northeast Nigeria led to the death, displacement and the perceived abuse of rights of many Nigerians. The first reported case of alleged human rights abuse in the region was in 2011. The commission is pleased to acknowledge that the Nigerian army is already conscious of the need to carry out the counter-insurgency operations with utmost respect for human rights, as this is beneficial to the army and Nigeria in general. We will continue to make ourselves available uh, to the Human Rights Commission. We don't have anything to hide. First and foremost, as I mentioned, our code of conduct and rules of engagement uh, to the Nigerian people, to protect them, uh, to make sure that their rights are protected. The Commission's Program Implementation Committee is putting measures to entrench human rights accountability in the Northeast. The Army Chief also received the U.S. and Ukrainian ambassadors to Nigeria, who promised to expand military ties with Nigeria. Ismail Musa, NTA News. An acting director, Defense Information, Brigadier General Rabe Abubakar says the Amnesty International report on the Nigerian Armed Forces and Security Agencies is another false fabrication aimed at tarnishing the image of the Nigerian military. He was speaking alongside other analysts on NTA's program, Good Morning Nigeria. Abdul Malik Adio reports. Guest on Good Morning Nigeria program say 2016-2017 Amnesty International report containing allegations of violence of human rights by Nigerian armed forces and other security agencies may not be accurate. They doubted the sincerity of purpose of the report and questioned the methodology of data gathering often employed by the Amnesty International for African Nations. What we are even more worried now is the sponsorship that is bringing up that. Let's be very open about this. Because the military has been able to take over uh, 
our, our, our capital territory from the, uh, from the insurgents. Obviously, the, person, the people that were sponsoring uh, these people against us have resorted to Amnesty International to be using it to destabilize the military. In the course of these operations, we are very much mindful of the, the human rights and the convention, relevant conventions of the United Nations and, 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 and charters. And right now, the commission is also partnering with the Nigerian army in a project which is funded by the EU to promote human rights accountability in the Northeast. The guest also appealed to all Nigerians to disregard the report and its content as they were meant to paint Nigeria in a bad light. In Abuja, Abdul Malik Adieu, NT News. The federal government is working in collaboration with other international bodies to make Nigeria's cultural celebrations attractive and economically viable. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, stated this during the quarterly public lecture by the Institute, National Institute for Cultural Orientation. Abdullah Igarwa Burnikudu reports. Drama and cultural displays depict Nigeria's culture at the Gothman to promote the nation's cultural potential. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says Gothman has selected 41 cultural festivals as part of efforts to make them globally competitive. Because we came to realize that Nigeria has a lot to show the world. Nigeria has a lot to harness from its culture. And from there, we moved to getting the various cultural, you know, what I call, I call this now the creative industry, the various creative industry in Nigeria to come together and be structured. Governor Richards Okorocha on the theme promoting culture, developing the economy, a Nigerian perspective, says considering Nigeria's endowment, it has no business going into recession. Even the fighting of corruption will be less burdensome if we introduce culture to it. As we are holding that Bible as governors or ministers or presidents who don't attach importance to that. With enhanced attention and improved investment, the sector will not only take us out of the current economic recession, it will propel us to the path of economic prosperity. For the Executive Secretary of the Institute, Professor Buckley's Poviri, the quarterly lecture is part of the mandate of NICO in promoting Nigeria's cultural heritage. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerbapurunokudu, NTA News. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. All Progressives Congress talks with its governors. We'll bring you details after the break. Stay with us. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel, and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. The National Examinations Council, NECO, wishes to inform the general public that the registration for the 2017 National Common Entrance Examination for admission into federal government unity colleges has commenced. Closing date, 27th March 2017. Forms are available at federal government colleges, state ministries of education, and NECO state offices nationwide. All payments should be made into NECO Treasury Single Account, TSA, in any of the commercial banks. Sale of forms closes 27th March 2017, and the examination is 8 April 2017. Professor Charles B. U. Uwakwe, Registrar Chief Executive, announcer. Hello? Welcome to the M6 Challenge. Using your new Geoni M6, carry out everything on that list. Starting now. Congratulations, you have...
up pass the test. Gioni M6 with a 5,000 milliamp battery that lets you go on for two days on a single charge. Gioni M6, always in power. The government of Bemis State, the Chief Area Traditional Council and the Central Planning Committee hereby invite all Nigerians and friends of the Chief Nation to the coronation of His Royal Majesty Ochiviri Professor James Otese Yoshua Ayate, 13th the 5th, date 4th March 2017, venue JS Taka Stadium, Goku, Benese, time 10 a.m. prompt. Be there, Honorable Titus Sam, CPC Secretary and Chief General John Atompera, Chairman, announces. <laughs> Assured project and its components get involved. Initiated by the wife of the president, Her Excellency Aisha Muhammadu Buhari, is not relenting in championing the cause of Nigerian women and children. Its provision of free medical screening, educational support, and the fight against malnutrition, especially in the Northeast, has indeed informed international recognition, partnerships, and awards. We are very grateful and appreciative for your wonderful gesture you have accorded to us. With future assured, Nigerian women and children are assured of a bright future. Future is assured when we join hands to promote the health of our women and children. Get involved. Get involved and support the Future Assured initiative. Future Assured, promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. The attention of the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, SGF, has once again been drawn to the nefarious activities of some criminal elements in the society who have devised yet another devilish method of defrauding unsuspecting members of the public by impersonating the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Engineer Babacher David Lowell. They seek monetary gratifications from their victims who, as usual, they are sure of employment in the public service or outright political appointments. Department of State Services, DSS and other security agencies have been informed and are working assiduously to curb the occurrence of this ugly phenomenon. Some culprits have indeed been apprehended. For the avoidance of doubt, some of the numbers they used are as follows. Members of the public are therefore hereby advised to be aware of fraudulent callers impersonating the SGF and indeed other top government functionaries. The general public are once again reminded that the federal government of Nigeria has established verifiable channels of communicating with individuals, groups and organizations. If in doubt, contact the press unit, Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Sheu Shagari Complex Abuja for clarifications, on all matters of public concern. Bolaji Adibi, announcer. You're still watching NTA Network News. A bit on the political scene now, the All Progressives Congress, APC, has once again reiterated its determination to continue to promote governance to make life more meaningful to Nigerians. National Chairman John Odigi Oyegun stated this at a meeting of the national leadership of the party with the governors. Dele Atumbi reports. Non-elective convention. John Odigi Oyegun said the All Progressive Congress has brought about change in the act of governance. He said the meeting is to consult the state governors elected on the platform of the party on its forthcoming non-elective national convention and diverse party issues. 
Odige Oyegun said the wide range of previous consultations have yielded positive results that will give more focus to the party, its unity and supremacy. Is to allow us as a party and as government to sit down, see how far we have come, what we have done right, assess ourselves. Briefing these men at the end of the meeting, the chairman of the Nigeria's Governors Forum, Abdulaziz Yari, said they deliberated on various issues pertaining to the success of the party's national convention. In the grassroots, we promise the party that we're going to continue to give support to our party and give support to our leadership, both the party and the federal government. The non-elective national convention of the APC is later for April this year, when all vacant positions at all levels of the party will have been filled. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. In another development, former Minister of Labor and Productivity, Joel Ikanga, has cited the performance of President Muhammadu Buhari as the key reason for the wave of defections to the All Progressives Congress nationwide. He led his supporters to quit the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for the All Progressives Congress, APC, in Wukari. Joseph Zanagambu reports. The former Minister of Labor and Productivity, Senator Joel Dallami, Kenya, is joining the All Progressive Congress, APC, with hundreds of his supporters alongside the former governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, in the 2015 elections in Taraba State, Chief David Sabo Kente and his supporters. Senator Ikenya described his decision to decamp to the APC as one that was inspired by the achievement of the president, especially in the areas of security, anti-corruption, and jobs creation. The way and manner Mr. President has uh, handled the issue of Boko Haram, the peace, because everything we do rely mostly on peace. On his part, the former gubernatorial candidate of the SDP, Chief David Sabo Kente, said, Taraba State needs to be reintegrated into the mainstream of national rebirth and developmental efforts, stressing that all men of goodwill are needed to come on board. He lamented the slow pace of progress in Taraba and called on Tarabans to join the change train. In Jalingo, Joseph Zanagambo, NTA News. The national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Senator Ali Modi Sharif, has said that the party is strategizing towards using political solution to end the crisis in the party as recommended by the party leader, former President Goodluck Jonathan. Speaking on behalf of Senator Sharif, the deputy chairman, Cairo Ojobo, said they are in tune with the recommendations of the former president during his meeting with the PDP governors. I agreed, everybody, 100%, that political solution is the way forward. And then dialogue is going on. Uh, people, the teams are meeting. Even as we speak, the Northern leaders are meeting. The National Assembly caucuses are meeting. And we believe that by, the, by Friday next week, uh, a firm uh, roadmap to peace would have emerged. Political correspondent Abdullah Garobunin Kudu, who visited the PDP National Secretariat, reports that it is now calm, unlike the previous days when protesters against, against the occupation of the office by Senator Sharif besieged the Wadata Plaza. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has received the report of its administrative panel on the December 10, 2016 reverse state rerun elections in which 29 members of staff were recommended for disciplinary action. The National Commissioner in charge of South-South, May Agbamuche Mbu, briefed newsmen on this. Timothy Yusuf reports. The Independent National Electoral Commission in late 2016 received a report from the EFCC indicting 202 of its staff of certain infractions. The final report of the investigation into the matter will be considered by the commission at its meeting next week. The National Commissioner adds that the commission's office in River State will be overhauled. In so doing, all the directing staff, that is, the administrative secretary, all heads of department, deputy directors, assistant directors, as well as all the 23 electoral officers who head our local government offices are being redeployed out of River State immediately. Meanwhile, Mrs. Agbamuche Umpu has announced that 28 resident electoral commissioners have completed their tenure, while five more 
will also complete theirs this week in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. As the Senator Ken Namani Constitution and Electoral Reform Committee continues a public hearing in Calabar for the South-South Geopolitical Zone, suggestions on abolition of the state's independent electoral commissions and coalition centers dominated discourse. Salu Abdullahi reports. Contributors shared similar views that Nigeria is operating a strong electoral process that is making her to take the lead and set agenda for other nations, particularly in Africa, to emulate. In view of the dynamic nature of elections globally, they note some key issues for reforms in the quest for a stronger electoral system as the government emphasizes improving security, reducing the number of political parties, allowing the National Assembly to take charge in appointing members of INEC team, sustaining electronic voting and encouraging diaspora voting dominated suggestions. It is not mandatory and it is not a part of the constitutional provision that we must hold a public hearing. It is not. But it has become conventional in our country that we subject matters of this nature to public scrutiny. Cross River State Governor, represented by the Deputy Governor, said reforms such as these will boost the country's political system and build and sustain an electoral model. Accreditation and vote take place at the same time. Should be thought about. We should think about it. The public hearing continues in other geopolitical zones. In Calabar, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. And poor gas infrastructure, sanctity in contracts, and power sector liquidity are some factors hindering, in, in, hindering adequate supply of gas to power plants as well as for domestic use. These were the highlights of the 26th edition of the Oloibri Lecture Series, an energy forum with a the theme, Domestic Gas Utilization in Nigeria for Producers to Users Held in Abuja. Mie Ogidi reports. With over 192 standard cubic feet of gas reserves, placing Nigeria at the ninth position on the global gas reserves chart, yet this does not reflect on the nation's GDP as well as per capita income index. Construction of more power plants through the NIPP has increased the gas demand in the country, but it is compounded by the inability of power generation companies to pay for gas supplied. There's only one remedy for this matter, and we believe it is a willing buyer, willing seller platform. It's as simple as that. While taking responsibility for these inadequacies, the group managing director of the NNPC is optimistic that rehabilitation and construction of new gas pipelines will close the infrastructure deficit in the sector. Beyond growing gas for the power sector, there has been strategic positioning of the sector to su support massive gas-based industrialization. The intent is to position Nigeria as the regional hub for gas-based industries such as fertilizer, methanol, petrochemicals, etc. The first of this effort is the, is the planned 30 square kilometers, the gas revolution industrial park in the Delta State. In addition to the many other training programs and initiatives, the PTDF is currently planning to establish a gas technology training facility in one of, the, in one of our premier centers of excellence in order to train the requisite human capital requirements for the entire gas value chain. Participants at the 26th Olaibri Lecture Series, a brainchild of the Society of Petroleum Engineers, passed a vote of confidence on the President Muhammadu Buhari led federal government for approving 701 billion naira for the power sector. Mie Ogidi, NTA News. Nigerians have been tasked on frequent prayers for President Muhammad Buhari to be back to continue the good works for the nation. It was at a prayer session organized by the Emir of Zaria, Shehu Idris. Muhammad Abubakar reports. Since the president traveled to London on medical vacation, Nigerians have been praying for his quick recovery to enable him to come back to attend to the myriad of challenges confronting the country. I left him to you. I left his family to you. 
So at the eternal Lord, O oh God, you are omnipotent and omnipresent, O oh Lord. There is none like you, O oh Lord. Better the heart of the president of Muhammad the Hariyah. Arabi is the Commissioner, Stakeholder Relations, Representative Governor Nasir Ahmad Erufayi at the prayer session. People come from every, you know, places to witness these prayers. Uh, a very fruitful uh, uh, end tenure. I wish him well. Convener of the prayer session, who is also the Emma of Zazo, Alhaji Shohu Idris, while thanking the people of the state for the concern shown to the president's life, urged them to continue to pray in all mosques and churches for his recovery and for the country to overcome her challenges. We pray to Allah to make it possible for the president to return home in a good condition of health. And Kaduna, Muhammad Abubakar, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. We now join Demola in Lagos for more reports. It's over to you, Demola. Thank you, Elizabeth. Good evening and welcome to Lagos. Nigeria's foremost development bank, Bank of Industry, First Bank of Nigeria, PLC, and After School Graduate Development Center are partnering to create 5 million jobs in Nigeria. The partnership is aimed at providing micro, small, and medium enterprises with funds to grow viable business initiatives. Amit Payos has the details. The partnership being championed by the Bank of Industry was designed to ensure that appropriate businesses have access to funds at single interest rate to grow their businesses. Coming to the acting managing director of the Bank of Industry, Waido Laguju, the terms and conditions for assessing the loans have been streamlined in such a way to remove bottlenecks being experienced by applicants before now. We will continue to try to change the terms and conditions to see how we can increase the access of our goods to the range of financial products that we uh, offer at the bank of industry and not lower cost than commercial bank because we learn at single digits. Chairman First Bank of Nigeria PLC, Ibukuma Wishika. They cry the level of youth unemployment, adding that our bank is committed to the success of the partnership to building new generation of businesses with positive impact on the economy and society. Our goal is to activate, to start a process. This will not solve all the problems of Nigeria, but believe that it would be substantial enough to create some impact, and more than anything else, will have an inductive effect. Bank of Industry says, it will ensure that business models under the scheme are realigned with emerging trends for increased efficiency. Applicants can assess loans as low as 250,000 naira for new businesses and 500,000 naira for existing enterprise with a tenor of one year. In Lagos, Amechi Pais, NTA News. We are still watching NTA Network News. We now take a break for some messages, after which the news continues from Abuja. Stay with us. Oh, it's happy hour. <laughs> so, you want a free Coca Cola, but you have to drink it here. Discover the true diversity of Nigerian food as we share how we prepare, cook, and enjoy our local dishes. Delicious Niger, brought to you by Maggie, showing on these stations. It's finally here, the most anticipated sports show on live television, featuring great sports icons from nationals to fans and administrators. It doesn't come bigger than the Sports Parliament, which premieres live on the NTA Network this Thursday from 11 p.m. to 12 midnight. Be a part of the biggest sports talk show on television to help chart a successful path for Nigerian sports. 11 p.m. to midnight on Thursday on the NTA. Sports Parliament, where the eggheads converge. Nigerians. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. 
They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Thank you for staying with us on NTN Network News. African Development Bank to invest $850 million to boost agriculture through various projects across the continent. Muklang Dakok has details of this and more on business news. Thank you for joining me on Business News. Africa currently imports food worth about $35.4 billion. And if not checked, this could rise to $110 billion in the next 10 years. To reduce this trend, the African Development Bank, AFDB, says it is set to invest $850 million in a project called Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation, of which wheat production alone is to go up $20.8 million. The bank has also promised to invest in other projects on the continent. We want to look at value addition. We want to look at infrastructure deficit and how we can bridge this. We want to catalyze additional financing through different innovative financing methods. And then we want to look at the enabling environment by government. What, does, what can government do in terms of taxation, tariffs, land reforms, and so on and so forth. In another development, over 80 billion naira has been released for the federal government's social safety net program. Special assistant to the president on social investments, Mariam Uwais, who made this known, said the program has so far been implemented in 11 states of the country. The federal government appropriated 500 billion naira for the social safety net program and other social intervention programs in the 2017 budget. Let's now take a look at equities on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, which closed on a negative note Thursday. concludes the segment. I am Muplang Dakok. Thank you, Muplang. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yaku Dogara, has emphasized the strategic importance of women to societal growth and development. He was addressing the maiden retreat of the House of Representatives Members' Wives Association. National Assembly correspondent, Dennis Adegunui, reports. As it becomes increasingly evident that participation of wives of political office holders is essential to building a sustainable democracy, this retreat provided an opportunity to take stock of the central role women play in supporting their husbands. You have a great role to play in keeping our families together for a well-organized family is the bedrock of any society. The speaker, in view of the existence of women in the House of Representatives, suggested a name change to House of Representatives Spouses Association, HOMSA. The retreat had the theme, role of spouses of members of parliament in a representative democracy. Meanwhile, the ministries of science and technology and environment and related agencies have defended the 2017 proposed appropriations for climate change related projects. We have a vital responsibility to meet our NDC and demonstrate to the world that we are a serious nation. The management of the National Center for Women Development also appeared before the House Committee on Women Affairs. If used to train poor women, would go a long way in alleviating poverty. From the National Assembly, Dennis Adignoye, NT News. There is yet growing concern over drug abuse among youths in Nigeria, especially in some states in the north. 
Rehabilitation and how to stop the menace is the thrust of discussions at the Northern Governor's Wives Forum held in Abuja. Lauri Balahassan reports. The theme for the forum is Say No to Drug Abuse. It is part of supporting their spouses, particularly on issues affecting women, children, the girl child, and other negative vices in the society. Wife of Zamfara State Governor and the chairperson of the forum said measures are being put in place to curb the menace by raising awareness and providing testing centers. People just tend to pretend that this is not a problem. So we felt this is a good opportunity to lend our voices as <coughs> wives of governors, as leaders in our various states, to come out and fight this, and it's a very good cause. Some of the governor's wives agree that inadequate educational exposure Peer pressure and absence of certain family values are factors that drive some people to drugs. We are ignorant about it, so but I'm so happy that this year around we all decided collectively to look into the future of our children. As mothers, as role models, as leaders in our society, we should lend our strong voice in fighting drug addiction. This is one thing that we must tackle if we're going to get to the bottom of it, is the regulation, the patent medicine stores. That is where it comes from. At the end of their deliberations, they resolved to partner organizations that will foster realization of the project at the national and state levels. In Abuja, Laure Balahassan, NTA News. The well-being of physically challenged children through provision of special education is yet being canvassed to give them a sense of belonging. This was echoed by the Defense and Police Officers' Wives Association on a visit to the Abuja Handicap School in Kuji Area Council. Ilyasu Ali Yaakob reports. Some of the items donated by Depoa include assorted bags of grains and toiletries, among other items. President of Depoa, Mrs. Omobolanle Oloni Shakin said the association is poised to deliver on its mandate of helping the needy in the society. She expressed satisfaction with the mental improvement of the pupils and enjoined the school management to intensify effort. A little love, a little support, and kindness go a long way to make a huge difference. Head teacher of the school, Victoria Aga, thanked the association for the gesture and appealed for more assistance from other organizations. My appeal to the government is that they should give us, mostly the supportive teachers, those people that take care of them in the hostel, because some of them cannot feed by themselves, they give them food and they cannot bath. Some of the pupils also share in the joy of the moment. I have a dream to be a politician. I see all the things you have bought. May God bless you and reward you. The Abuja Handicap School, established in May 1999, has so far graduated over 200 pupils who are presently in various higher institutions of learning, improving their capacity. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliakubu, NTA News. We take another break to bring you some more messages. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Approval of the whistleblower's policy by the Federal Executive Council and its launch by the Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun, patriotic Nigerians have been making inquiries on how and where they could deliver information that could lead to the stopping or uncovering of fraud to the appropriate authority and answers to frequently asked questions. The Federal Minister of Finance has therefore dedicated a telephone line for receiving SMS, a whistleblower's portal, and an email address through which members of the public who volunteer to disclose information about a possible misconduct or violation could deliver such information for the attention of the team dedicated to process such information. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NAVDAC impacts upon everything we do including water we drink, the food we eat, 
They are important organs to the development of this country. And everybody should come out and join them and support them and help them to achieve the greatest benefit and success that they need to record. Let us support NAFDAQ to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. So what's up, sweetheart? You really look like you're up to something. I have a secret. Okay. I'll be going to Europe next week. Seriously? Yeah. Like you have your visa, your, 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 your passport, your plane ticket. No, 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 not that way. Some men are helping us. We pay them, they take us through the desert, and then we cross the sea into Europe. The desert, the sea. Isn't that the route where many have died? Yes, it is indeed a very dangerous journey. In 2016 alone, 4,900 people died while crossing the Mediterranean Sea to enter Europe. Many were Nigerians. For the very few who survived the journey, they are forced into prostitution or other crimes just to survive. Eventually, they will be arrested and deported to Nigeria. Don't be a victim. Don't go this way. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. You're still watching NTA Network News. Force Public Relations Officer Jumo Moshud has confirmed the killing of one of the most wanted armed robbers and kidnapper terrorizing the Southeast region, Henry Chibwezi, popularly known as Vampire. He was in Oweri for a briefing on the matter. He said the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, is concerned with the spate of kidnapping and other violent crimes in Imo and other southeastern states and deployed police special forces led by intelligence response team to these states. The police special forces working under the supervision of the Commissioner of Police, Imo State Police Command, swept on the hideout of, the, of Henry Chubweze, a.k.a. Vampire and his gang, and engaged them in a fierce gun battle that lasted several hours in early, mo early hours of Thursday at Omuawa Forest in Ikwere Council area of River State. They will be charged to court on completion of investigation. The Inspector General of Police wishes to assure the good people of Imo State and other states of the Federation of Adequate Security and employed them to cooperate with the police personnel deployed to their localities. French conservative candidate Francois Fillon home raided to investigate alleged fake job given to his wife. For more on this and other reports, let's join Talat Ezeriki on Global Tidbits. Mixed reactions in Zimbabwe over a court ruling that outlaws corporal punishment both at school and at the home. Though the ruling followed a parent's complaint of a child bruises from a teacher's beating, some parents are however not pleased with the judgment, while rights group believe that it is long overdue. The constitutional court will have to confirm the judgment. From Sweden, the government has decided to reintroduce compulsory military service starting this summer to respond to global security challenges, including Russia. Similarly, German Chancellor Angela Merkel tells Egypt and Tunisia as part of her push to limit migrant flows to Europe. That is an unglobal tidbit. Talati Zeriki, NTA News. The Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development and the Lagos State Government have kicked off the process of rehabilitating the national stadium in Lagos. Teams from both sides of the party were conducted round by the liaison officer of the facility. Adiola Omokivi reports. 